Hello, and welcome back to the BFS E-News Podcast. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. Art is not what you see, but what you make others see. Edgar Degas. Today's show, we will feature a sneak peek at this year's International Baccalaureate Visual Arts Show and interviews with students and faculty about their work and the IB visual arts process. But first, listen to this sesquicentennial moment from the class of 1973, alumnus Freddie Brown Carter. It was a time of great experimentation. I remember a class room. I don't know if it was always the English classroom, but Donald Knees taught English in this classroom that was carpeted and different levels and all sorts of stuff. There was an art teacher who was really into letting us try all sorts of things and experiment. Mr. Norgard was just such an odd duck and so funny, and I don't think I would have ever eaten cuttlefish if it hadn't been for Mr. Norgard. Mr. Moore, I think there were ways that we identified with one another that I became more aware of as I got older. And Donald Conis was cute, and he was the English teacher. Well, I think everybody has a crush on their English teacher. You never have a crush on your math teacher, do you? I'm now going to head over to the upper school at Lawrence Street to interview students and faculty about the upcoming art show. Uh, I'm also going to ask one of the students, Sophie, to help me interview her fellow students. Hi, I have a question to ask you, Sophie. So, you have some art in the IB art show? I do. And what kind of art are you doing? Um, mostly 3D, but some 2D. And what inspires your work? Kind of just playing on the uh, playfulness and creativity of an imaginary world, but uh, at the same time making it creepy and kind of more dark as well. And what artists influence you? Um, I've liked I liked artists like uh, Tim Burton a lot. There were the Quai Brothers. Uh, both of those are movie directors, although I didn't do uh, much film in my installation. Uh, but I think that they they kind of capture the idea of like a world of their own, uh, kind of the idea of like cute but also creepy. So, what's your name? My name is Hilde Evil. Um. And do you have art in the art show? I do. <laughs> what kind of art do you have? I have mostly paintings. Uh, I have a photography piece and some drawings, too. <laughs> Who's your inspiration? Um, I really like Claude Monet, because I think he has really great paintings, um, and the Impressionist art too. <laughs> what are the intentions behind your work? I think uh, I was trying to make work that showed my own life in some way and showed like the small moments in people's lives. So what's your name? Emmett. Uh, do you have art in the IV art show? Yes. Uh, I did mostly portraiture and a couple of larger um, landscape paintings, so only a couple of those from the IV art show. Um, what are the intentions of your work? Um, they're, they're different depending on the piece, but a bunch of them are um, sort of a discussion of populism in America and on more of the international scene in Turkey and Russia. And who is your inspiration for this? I did a, a painting inspired by Winslow Homer, um, which is veteran in the new field, and my version of that uh, was to take his idea of changing agricultural and agrarian economies into a more urban one, but put it into a modern perspective and highlight the difference between sort of rural and urban um, populations in America now. My name is Philip Camposano. What does your work include? Uh, I have a couple sculpture pieces, some digital media pieces, and a time lapse. And what are the intentions of your work? Um, the main intention is to uh, control the viewer and to like manipulate their perception of what they're seeing. And who are your inspiration? Um, so my main inspirations are uh, Richard Prince, 
What does IB art offer as opposed to traditional art classes? I think IB art offers the freedom of just doing the art that, or the creativity that flows through you rather than like being taught lessons on how to do certain things. So it's like you get to experiment um, with your own creative abilities. Here I am in the art department checking out the IB art show that's being hung as we speak. But I'm here with Mark Benzel and Elizabeth Duell, who are IB art teachers here at Brooklyn Friends School. What's the difference between IB art and regular art classes? Well, with IB art, we have our students for two years. And our job is to help each of them develop a personally relevant and coherent body of work of their own. OK, and so Elizabeth, how do you approach teaching of art then with them with this IB curriculum? Well, every student is an individual. So we start off exploring lots of different materials and techniques, uh, looking at a lot of different artists. The students are required to go visit the museum every month and see lots of shows at galleries and museums. So they're researching artists and learning about different uh, movements. And through that, they start to develop their own individual perspective, their own vision, their own artistic voice. And we coach them through that. My experience with teaching IB art is that magically in the senior year, each student finds their own voice and begins making art that feels authentic and um, well executed so that there, there is an arc. To have them more than a year, you really see a really a, a pronounced arc of growth. Um, and another thing that we emphasize is that the studio component is about 50% of the experience, and about 50% is writing and research. So they begin to be able to talk about art more intelligently, too. Each student actually uh, curates their own show, is that right? Yeah, that's one of the fun parts of this process, is that they act as curators of their own work. So they're really thinking about the installation, uh, the space that they're installing, and how they're creating a conversation through the installation of their work that is communicating something to the viewer. What else? So there's painting, there's works on paper, we have photography, um, three-dimensional work, video, it sounds very comprehensive. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Freddie. And thank you, students. And thank you out there for listening to our E! News podcast. And let's all remember to let your art and your life speak. <laughs>